Bonjour mes amis. J'ai entendu de plusieurs parents que vous aimeriez avoir une autre vidéo. <rire> ça, ça c'est étrange que vous voulez voir moi sur vidéo, mais ok, <rire> je vais le faire. Um, I'm gonna make this video because I've heard from a few parents that you guys would like to see more videos, which seems crazy, but uh, but let's do it. I'm going for a walk. It's a beautiful day. Um, and I don't know if you can hear, but we're about to be near a pond. And even if you can't see the pond, you know it's there because of that sound. Those are mostly wood frogs. Wood frogs singing. And their song sounds like But then there are some that are going frogs. Let's go see if we can get a little closer. Can you hear them? They're very shy, so it's hard to get close to them. But the wood frogs like to call during the day. If I come back here tonight, the sound will be very different. Now there's someone else living in this pond. And there's a bit of a war going on between him, or her, or them, and the humans who like to keep this path open. Can you guess who it would be that would keep flooding this path? So if you weren't sure yet, then this might help you guess this animal has to be pretty strong because it made this dam <laughs> to hold the water back and I just climbed on top of the dam to grab this and you can see somebody left some really big teeth marks in this piece of wood. I'll move my hand up so you can see it's a pretty big piece of wood. Looks like he also ate the bark. Beavers do eat wood. They actually eat wood, as crazy as that seems. And here's another stick. And this one, as you can see, is juicy and tasty because he ate all the bark. And, and again, there's those awesome tooth marks. An animal is very big very strong teeth. Bonjour, ah, Nous avons euh, marché loin de où on était avec l'évidence le, du castor. Um, mais je veux vous montrer une autre partie de cet sentier. Là où il y a des, des érables, des chênes, des bouleaux, ce sont des arbres qui font partie de l'habitat des salamandres. So, um, I just said, you can translate for your parents, right, if your parents are watching, uh, that this, this um, forest that we're in now, it's, uh, it's mostly cedars and pine trees. It's not very good, and juniper, it's not very good habitat for what I want to find today. Uh, I want to find some beautiful flowers, and I also want to find some salamanders, and the flowers and the salamanders live in the same habitat under maples and oaks and birch trees. So let's go find that habitat. So here we are. This is the deciduous part of this forest. And you can see that there is no cover yet. The leaves are still sleeping, but they're coming. We could go this way on the path. But we're not going to. We're going to go that way. Up to that ridge. Okay, two seconds after I finished making that last part of the video where I said we would walk up to that ridge up there, I turned over this rock right here. And oh my friends, I'm so excited to show you this. If we were in school right now, 
I would definitely be bringing this beautiful fellow in to see you. Isn't he gorgeous? Look at him while oh, he's cold still. He's just waking up. This is a blue spotted salamander. Get the thing focusing so you can see his beautiful blue spots. Isn't he wonderful? He's an amphibian. He's probably very like the very first amphibian that crawled out of the, the mud. Oh, I'm so sorry, little buddy. In some ways, that's about a view of him. He's okay, I didn't hurt him. Isn't he lovely? Look at those perfect little feet. How many toes can you count? Each one of those tiny toes has bones inside. I'm gonna pick him up one more time. Mm. This is one of my favorite animals. I think they're so wonderful. I'm so glad I was able to find one and show them to you. Now, I want to reassure you, I'm not gonna put that great big rock back in on top of this beautiful salamander. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gently tuck him in beside the rock and then I'm going to put the rock back so that the salamander doesn't get smushed and if he wants to go back in there he can in fact I might even I might even tuck him in under the leaves so that he won't get dry because salamanders breathe through their skin and in order to do that their skin has to stay moist and it's actually quite dry here in the forest. So I'm gonna tuck him in even deeper than that. Now there's the other thing I wanted to show you. All of that green over there, those aren't flowers. That's actually something called wild leek. And if you like the taste of onions, I bet you would love the taste of these. They are yummy, but they're strong. And here's another flower. This tiny little beauty is actually called just that. This is spring beauty. And this has just come since the last time I was here. But there are other things coming up in this area. If you look closely, you can see lots of other things. And this one with this funny shaped leaf and this beautiful color is a trout lily. And I see some trilliums starting to come. There's a trillium right there. You can see the three leaves. That is a trillium. And here's one that's been blooming for a little while now. This gorgeous flower I sent you a picture of last week. And Edsby. He has very furry little buds, and that's because he's one of the first to come up. And that fur keeps him warm. And this is called hepatica. And I had to show you this one too, because this is another hepatica, but isn't he lovely? What a beautiful color that is. And there's a little tr trout lily starting to come beside him. Now, sometimes it's worth looking under big pieces of bark too, even though there probably won't be salamanders. Sometimes there are other things hiding under bark. Oops. Whoa. What? are those? Huh. Hmm. I think, I'm not even sure if that's animal or plant, I think those might be false puffballs, which would make them a fungus, but they also look a bit like gypsy moth caterpillar cocoons. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look that one up when I get home. In fact, maybe I'll try using iNaturalist. See if I can find that. Okay, my friends. I wanted to keep looking. So I lifted this rock and look who I found. This is the most common 
species of salamander that we have. <laughs> She's oh, a red-backed salamander. Isn't he lovely? Oops. And again, Madame keeps dropping her amphibians. And look what I found in the very same place. Look at this beautiful tiny amphibian. <laughs> oh, he's so lovely. Little baby toad. How it is that there's a baby toad at this time of the year, I'm not exactly sure. If he overwintered like that. He's cold. Poor little buddy. Hmm. Isn't he lovely? He's <sighs> just peed on me. I'm gonna put him back. Just like the salamander. I'm going to put him beside the rock. And then I'm gonna put the rock back. So that I don't squish him. And he'll find his way. Look how well he hides. It's so hard to see him. There he goes. Look who else I found. This is a morning cloak butterfly. It's one of the first butterflies of spring. And he's been very cooperative with us. Isn't he beautiful? Look at those gorgeous purple spots. His wings look a little tattered. He's going to finish out his life cycle very soon. That's cool. Hello, my friends. That dot in the distance is the moon. I came back out to the pond because I wanted you to hear how different it sounds now at night. It sounds differently because the spring peepers have joined the chorus. You can still hear the wood frogs. They sound like chickens. But the spring peepers, oh, I can make the moon a little bit bigger. <laughs> spring peepers are the loudest sound. And as we get closer to summer, more frog species will join the chorus. I'm going home to bed now. Good night, everybody. I miss you. Stay well. <laughs>